Today I'm going to be taking a look at one of the newer Seiko Prospects releases. It's a recreation of the very first 1959 Seiko Alpinist. Uh, pretty cool watch, pretty cool colorway, so let's get into it. We have a diameter of 39, lug to lug of 46, height of 13, and a lug width of 19 millimeters. Some other general specifications for the watch, we're going to have the Seiko 6R35 movement beating away in here. It has a 21,600 beat per hour rate. It, but thankfully, because of the slower rate, we have a higher power reserve of 70 hours. Uh, it's pretty accurate within 10 seconds a day for me, so all good there. We also have Seiko's classic Lumabrite applied for the hands and the indices, everything you've seen, that kind of faux tan loom. Uh, other than that, we're going to have a slightly curved sapphire crystal here with inner AR coating, and I believe uh, sapphire on the case back as well. We also have a screw down crown here with 200 meters of water resistance. And last but not least, the watch retails for $750 direct from Seiko, but I'm sure you can get it closer to that $600, maybe even $550 mark, depending on if it's used or just through eBay or whatnot. So looking at the dial here, and I think it's really well done. It has a beautiful tone to it. Seiko states it's a cream dial, but for me, it's more of a very subtle champagne leaning color. And it's a really delicate, delicate sun ray pattern. It can get overblown in certain like very highlight situations but it always has that nice yellowish gold undertone looking a little bit more generally at the design itself at 6 9 and 12 we have what seiko's calling their mountain markers this is a recreation uh i guess very stylistic recreation of the original 1959 alpinist so we have that 12 o'clock marker that is a little bit different than the six and the nine but it helps with delineation knowing kind of which way is up in the dark you have these rectangle markers for everywhere else and a kind of I guess like one fourth, one eighth triangle marker here at the three because of the date window. It's all pretty harmonious within itself. I think it looks nice. Classic Seiko sword style hands here with a nice split down the middle. We also have this very subtle touch of goldish tannish coloring in the seconds hand there. It doesn't always come out. It's not always super apparent, but when it does pop out in color, it is a very nice subtle touch to the design. A subtle detail I really like about the design here is the second slash minutes track between the markers. It is on this very metallic track here, uh, and I think it stands out more than if it would have been at the complete periphery of the dial. It shines a little bit more, it adds a little bit of a darker color of that goldish tone to the dial as well, and gives another little area of the light to play with. So cool little detail. And overall, even though they had to add the little Prospects X logo there, I think the dial is still very minimal. There's not too much text on it, and it still looks pretty clean. Zooming in on the dial here, and of course, being a fairly affordable Seiko, it's going to have a little bit of imperfections on it. As you can see there in the logo itself on that eye, there is a little bit of speckling. The Seiko just kind of emblem itself is not the most perfectly polished, but it could be forgiven. Uh, same thing goes with the markers. They are a little bit rough along the edges and there's a little bit of speckling on top of them here and there. Overall, I do think they still look pretty nice. The loom is applied pretty evenly and consistently, uh, but there are just some of these little minor rough inconsistencies that you would kind of just expect at this price point. Looking at the hands here and they're fairly well done, especially this nice golden bronze, almost rose gold hand here pretty blemish free and just nicely coated in whatever process they use to coat that. The actual base hands themselves, again, a little bit roughness along the edges of it, a little bit of speckling on that hour hand there, uh, but overall still fairly clean. Again, the loom applied very, very nicely. So although it isn't the cleanest on macro, it also isn't the worst I've seen at all. And the date window is actually pretty well applied. Uh, a little detail I didn't notice until we actually got this close is that the outside is polished while the inside innermost kind of lip is a little bit more blasted. So cool little detail. Uh, the watch, I would say, still holds up under macro pretty well. The dial itself looks very, very beautiful. You have that pretty fine pattern of the sunburst in it that has that subtle gold tone to it, that subtle silver tone to it, and it really changes back and forth just depending on the angle and just the ambient lighting. One thing to notice about the loom is that towards the periphery, it is a little bit darker than it is towards the middle, a little bit of a bicolor effect there, but nothing major and nothing you really notice from wrist. Overall, really not a bad looking watch under macro at all, and I think for the price, it still holds up fairly well. Moving on to the case, and I think while pretty simple, it's still very, very well done. 
looking at the case here, there's a mixture of brushed and polishing to the, almost every surface. The lugs here are about half to half uh, and it's slightly angled. So the outermost angle is polished while the inner angle facing the bracelet is brushed, which I think ties in very nicely with the brushed bracelet. A nice part about the bezel is it has this somewhat conical shape to it where it's a little bit thin at the top but expands beneath it and just kind of reveals an extra polished layer, which adds a little bit of dimensionality to the watch, which I really like to see. Looking at the side here, we have it all horizontally brushed mid case, not too shabby at all. Uh, pretty simple overall design language in the case itself, really just a circle with somewhat fancy lugs, but it's effectively done. The crown isn't too big at all, has a nice knurling to it, easy to unwind, easy to, or really unscrew, easy to screw in, uh, really no complaints. The bracelet too surprised me because it has a little bit of design I really wasn't expecting. As you can see, it's kind of a standard three link bracelet, but each mid link has a upper and lower portion which are beveled and then polished. And I think it adds a nice little light play within the bracelet itself as the bracelet articulates. It adds a nice little bit of depth to the bracelet. Uh, and a little extra geometry that you kind of weren't expecting. You really expected everything to just be flat and this adds a little bit of visual interest. It's similar to, I believe the Sark's bracelets did something similar, except the mid links were a little bit more raised. And I might even like this application a little bit better. Very simple fold over clasps here. Uh, not the strongest feeling, just regular push button deployment with a very small clasp and only two holes of micro adjust. I would like to see more micro adjust, but at the end of the day, it's a decent Seiko bracelet. And lastly, just a quick look at the case back there, fairly undecorated Seiko movement. And for some reason they wanted to stamp Seiko and then the Prospects logo on the, to the glass itself. So moving on to how the watch wears earlier, I was wearing my Credor, so you know, keep it in the Seiko family. Here we have the Seiko on my six and a half inch wrist. The 39 millimeter case, the fairly constrained lug to lug, the way the lugs actually angle themselves down a little bit, it all works very well on wrist. And although it isn't the thinnest case at all, and Seiko really isn't known for super thin cases, it still wears well, it still wears comfortably. I don't think it's too thick by any means. Looking at the watch from the side, again, it isn't the most slim, but it does have a good curve to the mid case, sits well within the wrist. There isn't any uncomfortable edges or sharp edges that dig into the wrist in any way. So it is a very comfortable watch to wear. I think it's a well-fitting watch. And overall, Seiko did a really good job. Moving on to some other straps here, we have this Barton Elite silicone strap, and I believe khaki they call it. Obviously, I think it pairs really well with the champagne-ish brown tones already on the dial. And of course, since this is meant to be a sporty style watch, fits well. And there we have it, not too bad of a combo, super comfortable, adds a little bit of texture. So I dig it. Next, introducing a little bit of green, we have this nice strap from Cheapest NATO Straps, quick release spring bars, which is always a nice touch. Uh, not the highest quality, but fairly comfortable and I think has a really nice, beautiful green depth to it. And there we have it. I think it dresses up the watch fairly nicely. Uh, not too dressy, not too rugged, not too sporty, uh, just the right amount of everything. <laughs> Adding a little bit of classiness to it, we have this Italian leather strap from Vario, super comfortable, super great value. I think pairs the with the watch really well. Not too bad, very tonal, very color matchy. Again, very comfortable strap. Uh, tapers from 19 down to 16, so a nice generous taper. Uh, and I think it looks really good with the watch. Taking a look at the loom here, it's pretty well done. I mean, being Seiko, you expect it to be fairly good. As you can see, it has a somewhat blue tone to it, some of them along the BGW9 lane. Uh, pretty well loomed overall. The hands are the brightest a little bit but fair amount of loom on all the other markers as well and a tiny little bit on the seconds hand, so fair amount of legibility. Relooming and comparing to the classic Timex, we can see pretty similar color temperatures, but the Timex is obviously brighter. Seiko by no means is badly loomed. Uh, not too shabby, definitely readable, lasts a fair amount of time, and I don't think you'd be that disappointed. So pros and cons of this watch, and the first immediate pro for me is just gonna be the size of it. At 39 millimeters, it would just wear as well. Uh, it's not too overly thick, but of course it's not a slim dress watch by any means. Uh, but I think Seiko did a pretty good job with the case proportions overall, the way the case fits on wrist, and just the overall look and design of the case itself. My next pro for the watch would be the dial color itself. I think the champagne, very subtle sunburst works well for the watch. 
it isn't too overly flashy, it's not too overly sporty, it's not too overly dressy. So I think it strikes a nice middle ground between all those elements and is just executed surprisingly well. I'm not a huge fan in general of champagne or even gold leaning dials, but I think this dial is both subtle enough and in comparison to the other colorways, I think the tan-ish, faux-ish loom of the loom <laughs> just stands out the least on this model. And lastly, I was really surprised by the bracelet overall. I think the extra little bit of design into it with the bevels on each mid-link looks really nice. I think it complements the watch well. Uh, it's something I really didn't expect from this watch, and it's nice to see Seiko took the extra step to just make it better for the sake of making it better. Moving on to cons, and while the bracelet is done very well, I think the clasp could be improved a little bit. It only has two holes of micro adjust, which at that point, why even put micro adjust in the bracelet? I would like to see at least four holes of micro adjust, maybe even half links to the watch itself. But as it stands, it's not too bad. Another con for me and probably most people is the fact that this watch uses 19 millimeter lugs. Uh, it's just kind of annoying. I don't know why companies do it. Thankfully, I have enough 19 millimeter straps where it doesn't really matter anymore. But if you don't already have a collection of 19 millimeter straps, it's a little annoying. Uh, so just something to keep in mind, this watch isn't perfect. And lastly, and it's totally my personal preference, the fact that I do enjoy the original Alpinist, which this watch is based off of a little bit more than this watch. Uh, the original Alpinist had like a greater dial to case ratio. It just looked a little bit dressier. It was a little bit thinner, I believe as well. So it had a lot of elements going for it, which this watch doesn't really capture very well. It is very much more a reinterpretation into a sportier lane. It is a little bit thicker, obviously has more water resistance and uh, looks a little bit more modernized, but I can't help but just enjoy the old one a little bit more. Final thoughts on this watch, and I think it is a pretty good watch coming out of Seiko. I think it is a little bit highly priced at the $750 mark. Uh, there's a lot of value in micro brands nowadays, and they can do a lot of what Seiko's doing here for usually half the price. And if you're paying the same price, you're probably getting better value, more interesting design, something along that area. So I do think it's a good watch. I would never pay the full $750. I'd pay maybe $6, $550, $500 if you can even get it for there. It is still, I think, a compelling watch if you just like the design. I think it is well executed. I think the color in particular is very, very beautiful. And because it has that 200 meters of water resistance, it can be your everyday watch. It's not overly sporty, it doesn't have a sports bezel, so it can be dressed up with uh, leather straps as I showed earlier. Or again, on the bracelet, can be taken to the pool, can be taken to the ocean. Uh, so it kind of covers everything. Overall, pleasantly surprised by this watch. Really did not expect to like it because I don't even like gold in the first place, but I still ended up enjoying my time with it. Let me know if you end up getting one of these watches. Even if you don't, let me know what you think about it in general. Uh, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in another one.